Throughout the NHL's history, we've seen some downright ugly trades. Now, not every trade in the moment seemed terrible. However, looking back on a lot of these trades, they make absolutely zero sense and fans today are still feeling the repercussions. Keeping that in mind, here are the worst trades for all 32 NHL teams. The Anaheim Ducks in a surprising move, the Anaheim Ducks traded Team Mussolini to the San Jose Sharks following his highly productive five and a half year tenure in Anaheim, where he tallied an impressive 482 points in just 394 games played. The trade saw Team Mussolini, a beloved figure among Ducks fans, exchanged for Jeff Friesen, Steve Shields, and a 2003 second round draft pick. While Solani had two decent seasons in San Jose, he never quite reached the same level of production he had achieved with the Ducks. Many speculated that his career might actually be in decline. The lockout brought Solani back to the Ducks in 2005, making the start of his historic comeback chapter of his career. Now what made this trade so bad was that Jeff Friesen, known for getting 20 goals and putting up 60 points for the Sharks, struggled to replicate that success with the Ducks, posting just 17 goals and 43 points in one full season. Friesen was eventually traded to the New Jersey Devils in a deal that brought Peter Sikora to Anaheim. Steve Shields, who had an unimpressive season as a goalie for the Ducks, ended up having a brief stint in the NHL before leaving the league in 2005-2006. Interestingly, the draft pick acquired from the trade turned out to be the silver lining for Anaheim. Although the Ducks did not use the second round pick themselves, they traded it along with their own second round pick to Dallas in exchange for Dallas's first round pick, which ultimately became none other than Corey Perry. The Arizona Coyotes Daniel Briere's journey with the Phoenix Coyotes began when he was selected 24th overall in the 1996 NHL Draft. After putting up impressive numbers in junior hockey, he honed his skills in the AHL with the Springfield Falcons, becoming their third all-time leading scorer. He finally secured a full-time roster spot with the Coyotes in the 2001-2002 season, which proved to be his most productive season with the team, amassing 32 goals and 60 points, excelling on the power play and showcasing a strong two-way game. However, Briere's subsequent season saw a slight dip in his numbers along with a significant drop in his plus-minus rating. Then, in a move that would ultimately haunt the Coyotes, he was traded to the Buffalo Sabres at the 2003 trade deadline in exchange for Chris Gradden with draft picks also changing hands. Briere's career absolutely took off in Buffalo where he became a star and team captain, particularly during the 2005-2006 season when he recorded 95 points and helped lead the Buffalo Sabres to the conference finals. This trade turned out to be a missed opportunity for the Coyotes as Briere's talent and leadership flourished elsewhere, leaving fans wondering what might have been if he remained with the Coyotes. As for Gradden, well, he spent a little over a season in Phoenix before he was traded to Colorado. The Boston Bruins the Boston Bruins trade of Joe Thornton to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Marco Sturm, Brad Stewart, and Wayne Primo has been widely regarded as one of the most lopsided trades in NHL history. At the time of the trade, Thornton was considered the franchise player for the Bruins, but just 23 games into his three-year $20 million extension, he was shipped to the San Jose Sharks. The move was driven by the Bruins' desire for change, feeling that Thornton wasn't the kind of player and leader they needed to build their team around. In return, they received three serviceable players, but the trade was ultimately criticized as exchanging a star player for a trio of role players. Brad Stewart and Wayne Primo had brief stints with the Bruins, each lasting around 100 games before being traded to the Calgary Flames in separate deals. Marco Sturm, while enjoying some success with the Bruins, could not match the impact that Joe Thornton had in San Jose. Despite not winning a Stanley Cup, the trade has been heavily criticized because trading away a 26-year-old franchise center should ideally yield more than three role players, making it a regrettable deal for the Bruins and a stroke of fortune for the San Jose Sharks. The Buffalo Sabres The summer of 2001 marked the beginning of a challenging period in the Buffalo Sabres history. To address their financial woes, the Sabres were forced to reduce their payroll, which led to the departure of key players. Captain Michael Pekka was traded to the New York Islanders due to a contract dispute, setting the stage for further challenges. However, the most devastating blow came on June 30th, 2001, when the legendary Dominic Hasek era in Sabres history came to an end. Hasek, the megastar netminder who had spent nine remarkable seasons in Buffalo, winning numerous Vesna and Hart trophies, was traded to the Detroit Red Wings. This marked a significant shift for the team that had relied heavily on Hasek's brilliance for nearly a decade. 
Unfortunately, the return the Sabres received in this trade was underwhelming. In exchange for possibly the greatest player in Sabres history, the team received only one player, Vyacheslav Kozlov, who had an injury-plagued season with the Sabres and a 2002 first-round pick. The trade was of course widely criticized given Hasek's status as the best goaltender in the league at the time and his subsequent Stanley Cup win in Detroit added to the frustration. While Hasek was 36 years old at the time, he was still at the peak of his abilities and many believe that the Sabres could have commanded a much more substantial return for such a legendary player. The Calgary Flames on January 2nd, 1992, the Calgary Flames made a trade that would go down as the worst trade in franchise history. In this significant transaction, the Flames sent away a considerable chunk of their core, including Doug Gilmore, Rick Natras, Jamie McCone, Kent Manderville, and Rick Wamsley, in exchange for Gary Lehman, Craig Berube, Alex Godinyuk, Jeff Reese, and Michelle Petit. This trade was essentially a dismantling of the Flames roster as they traded away key players, their backup goalie, and a promising prospect in return for a mix of role players and depth assets. The largest deal in NHL history at the time, the departure of the popular Doug Gilmore, seemed to signal the beginning of the end of the Calgary Flames glory days. Now Lehman, who was a former 50 goal scorer, only put up 11 goals for the Flames in 59 games over the course of two seasons, and Calgary missed the playoffs for the first time in franchise history in the 91-92 season. As for Gilmore, well, he went on to lead the Leafs, who were one of the worst teams in the league at the time of this trade, and he brought them to within one victory of a Stanley Cup final appearance the following season. Gilmore posted two 100-point seasons as a Leaf and set franchise records for assists points in his first full season season with Toronto, winning the Selkie Trophy, and finishing second to Mario Lemieux for the Hart Trophy. The Carolina Hurricanes Just before the trade deadline, the Whalers sent Ron Francis, Ulf Samuelson, and Grant Jennings to the Pittsburgh Penguins. In return, they received forwards John Cullen and Jeff Parker, along with defenseman Zarly Zalipski. This trade essentially made a good Penguins team even better, adding Francis as an effective second-line center alongside Mario Lemieux, plus Samuelson's gritty presence on the back end. The immediate impact was evident as the Penguins went on to win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups in 91 and 92, solidifying their status as a dominant force in the league. Unfortunately for the Whalers, the trade did not yield the same positive results. While Cullen and Zalipski had brief and relatively successful stints in Hartford, their time there was shortly lived as Cullen was traded to Toronto after just one season in exchange for a second round pick and Zalipski's time with the Whalers lasted only slightly longer before he was traded to Calgary. Despite the regrettable trade, there was a silver lining for the franchise as Ron Francis eventually re-signed with the team after they relocated to North Carolina, becoming a key figure in the Carolina Hurricanes history. The Chicago Blackhawks In August 1996, the Chicago Blackhawks made a fateful decision to trade away their franchise star, Jeremy Roenick, in what was a cost-saving move. Roenick, an elite NHL center, was a restricted free agent seeking a five-year contract worth $4 million, which was a salary that the Blackhawks were unwilling to match. So they shipped him off to the Phoenix Coyotes in exchange for Alexei Zamenhof, Craig Mills, and a first-round pick. At the time, the Blackhawks believed that Zamenhof could be a more economical replacement for Roenick, projecting him as the next Sergei Fedorov. However, they were unable to reach a contract agreement with Zamenhof before the season began. Phoenix had no problem coming to terms with Roenick. Meanwhile, in Chicago, they could not work out a deal with Zamenhof. With eight games into the 1996-97 season without Roenick and no viable replacement, the Blackhawks ultimately signed Zamenhof to a five-year, $15 million deal, which means they only really saved $5 million and lost Roenick in the process. The Colorado Avalanche The Colorado Avalanche made a regrettable decision when they traded away Chris Drury, a player known for his brilliance and exceptional two-way play. Drury had won the Calder Trophy and was a crucial part of the Avalanche's 2001 Stanley Cup Championship run. However, just before the 2002 NHL season, the Avalanche traded Drury and Stefan Yell to the Calgary Flames. In return, they received Derek Morris, Dean McAmmond, and Jeff Shantz. This trade was particularly painful for Avalanche fans as it included an underrated two-way player in Yell and a dynamic player who could have thrived alongside Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg. 
The trade ultimately did not work out in Colorado's favor as Morris fizzled out and quickly was traded to Phoenix. McGammond had a brief stint with the team before being traded back to Calgary and Chance played just one season with the Avalanche before signing in Europe. Meanwhile, Chris Drury enjoyed a successful career, particularly with the Buffalo Sabres and his departure from the Avalanche is seen by many as a missed opportunity for the team to win multiple Stanley Cup championships. The Columbus Blue Jackets The Columbus Blue Jackets made a significant trade that had long-lasting implications. They traded away Jacob Voracek, a promising forward who already contributed 39 goals and 95 assists to the Blue Jackets in three seasons. While Voracek went on to perform consistently for the Flyers, the trade also included valuable draft picks such as a 2011 first-round pick that became Sean Couturier and a 2011 third-round pick that turned into Nick Cousins. Unfortunately for the Blue Jackets, both of those players proved to be valuable assets for the Flyers. In return for Voracek, Couturier, Cousins, and the draft picks, the Blue Jackets acquired Jeff Carter. Carter had a relatively short stint with the Blue Jackets, playing in just 39 games during which he contributed 15 goals and 10 assists. However, Carter's tenure in Columbus was met with tension as he quickly became the subject of fan frustration. This trade overall was a challenging pill to swallow for the Blue Jackets given that when you sum this trade up, they gave away a bunch of talent and only received a limited impact player. The Dallas Stars one of the most questionable moves during Joe Neuendijk's tenure as the Dallas Stars GM was the trade that sent James Neal, a prolific goal-scoring winger, and Matt Niskanen, a dependable defenseman, to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for Alex Golagovsky, a skilled D-man. This trade raised eyebrows because trading either Neal or Niskanen for Golagovsky individually might have been more reasonable, but trading both of these assets appeared to be an excessive cost. At the time, the trade was heavily scrutinized. While Neal and Niskanen are no longer with the Panthers, Golagowski has evolved his game, leading some to view this trade more balanced in hindsight. However, it remains a point of debate among fans and analysts. While Golagowski has solidified his position as part of the Stars' top defensive pair, some argue that he might be better suited as a second pair defenseman, particularly if the team had a stronger top pair option. The Detroit Red Wings the Detroit Red Wings made a perplexing decision to trade away playmaking center Adam Oates and winger Paul McLean to the St. Louis Blues. The duo had combined an impressive 149 points in the previous season, but the Red Wings were looking to change up their roster. In exchange for Oates and McLean, Detroit acquired Bernie Federico and Tony McKegney, two veterans whose prime days were behind them. Unfortunately for the Red Wings, McKegney was actually traded shortly after the season started, and Federico only spent a single year in Detroit before retiring. Once Oates joined the Blues, he formed a highly productive partnership with Brett Hall, becoming one of the most prolific duos in the early 90s. Over the next five seasons, playing with the St. Louis Blues and Boston, Oates consistently demonstrated his playmaking prowess, with his worst year still resulting in an impressive 99 points during the 91-92 campaign. When Oates retired in 2004, he had amassed an impressive 1,420 points, including over 1,000 assists, solidifying his legacy as one of the NHL's greatest playmakers. The Edmonton Oilers on August 9, 1988, a day etched into the memory of Edmonton Oilers fans, the franchise experienced one of its most devastating moments as it saw Wayne Gretzky, the greatest player in NHL history, traded to the LA Kings. This trade was brought on by financial difficulties and it sent shockwaves through the hockey world. In exchange for Gretzky, the Kings acquired not only the hockey legend himself, but also his formidable linemate Marty McSorley, a premier enforcer with offensive skills, and Mike Krushelinski, a forward who previously scored 43 goals for the Oilers. Gretzky and McSorley played pivotal roles in leading the Kings to the Stanley Cup Final in 1993, while Gretzky continued to set numerous NHL records throughout his illustrious career. In return, the Oilers received Jimmy Carson, Martin Jelna, the Kings' first-round draft picks in 1989, 1991, and 1993, along with $15 million in cash. However, the Oilers made the surprising decision to trade Carson to Detroit after just one season and in the process they also let go of Adam Graves. Although Jelna did not fully flourish in Edmonton, he went on to have a successful career elsewhere. The Florida Panthers On June 23, 2006, the Florida Panthers made a trade that would be later seen as a significant loss for the franchise. They sent their star goaltender Roberto Luongo to the Vancouver Canucks, receiving Todd Bertuzzi, Brian Allen, and Alex Ald in return. At the time of the trade, Luongo was 
27 and had already established himself as a top tier goaltender with a 920 save percentage and a 2.67 goals against average in over 300 games played for the Panthers. He had earned one all-star selection and had been a Vezina Trophy finalist. During his time with the Canucks, Luongo continued to excel, playing 448 games with a 919 save percentage and a 2.36 goals against average. He earned multiple all-star selections, a Jennings Trophy, and was a finalist for the Vezina and Hart Trophy. He also led the Canucks to six postseason appearances, including the 2011 Stanley Cup Finals. As far as the return goes, Bertuzzi was the centerpiece, and he went on to struggle with injuries during his brief tenure in Florida, playing only seven games before being traded to Detroit. Ultimately, this trade was marked by the loss of Luongo, who went on to have a highly successful career in Vancouver, making it a significant missed opportunity for the Florida Panthers. The Los Angeles Kings on March 10, 1980, the LA Kings made a trade that would later become one of the most significant deadline deals in NHL history, but unfortunately for them, they were on the losing side of it. The Kings traded Butch Goring to the New York Islanders in exchange for Billy Harris and Dave Lewis. The league did not see this trade coming and left Goring, who spent over a decade with the Kings and had become a fan favorite and a franchise icon, extremely disappointed to leave. His departure marked the end of an era for the Kings as he had registered 659 points in 736 games. However, his career ended up taking a remarkable turn with the Islanders, where he became an integral part of their dynasty from 1980 to 1983, winning four consecutive Stanley Cups. Goring added depth at center and recorded 62 points in 78 playoff games during those championship runs, earning the Conn Smythe Trophy as the most valuable player in the Stanley Cup playoffs in the 1980-81 season. While Goring enjoyed immense success with the Islanders, the Kings did not benefit nearly as much much from the players they received in return. Harris played only 107 games for the Kings, tallying 60 points before being traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Lewis, who stayed longer with the Kings, only managed just 5 goals and 41 points in 221 games played before being traded away to the Minnesota North Stars. The Minnesota Wild The Minnesota Wild made a trade that didn't quite work out in their favor when they sent Brent Burns, a proven offensive defenseman, and a 2012 second round pick to the San Jose Sharks for Devin Setaguchi, Charlie Coyle, and a 2011 first round pick. While giving up the second round pick didn't leave a significant hole in their roster, it eventually turned into a promising prospect. Brent Burns, a top pairing defenseman with versatility to play forward, had been a key player for the Wild for seven seasons. Despite some injury setbacks, he displayed offensive potential while maintaining a strong defensive presence. Upon joining the Sharks, Burns became a cornerstone of their defense, shutting down opposing players and evolving into an offensive powerhouse from the blue line. He consistently increased his point production and became one of the league's most recognizable players, earning a Norris Trophy nomination and winning it in the 2016-2017 season. Had the Wild not traded Burns, both his career and the Wild franchise might have taken different trajectories. In return for Burns, the Wild acquired a first round pick in Zach Phillips, who has yet to play an NHL game and may never fulfill his NHL dream. Setaguchi, a former 8th overall pick, had a promising start to his career, but saw his numbers decline during his time with the Wild. He was eventually traded to the Winnipeg Jets for a second round pick, and had struggled to regain his form. On the other hand, Charlie Coyle, a young prospect at the time of this trade, had steadily improved, increasing his point production each season, becoming a valuable player for the Wild, although his presence on the offensive end simply could not replace Brent Burns' impact. The Montreal Canadiens One of the most notorious trades in Montreal Canadiens history occurred on June 30th, 2009 when they sent a promising young defenseman in Ryan McDonough along with forward Chris Higgins to the New York Rangers in exchange for Scott Gomez and Tom Pyatt. McDonough, the 12th overall pick in the 2007 draft, had the potential to become a franchise cornerstone and this trade is often considered as one of the worst trades in Canadiens history. It's worth noting that the Canadiens also had P.K. Subban who went on to be a star defenseman. If they held on to McDonough and Subban, they could have formed one of the league's most formidable defensive pairs. Scott Gomez was the centerpiece of this trade and at the time his acquisition seemed promising. He had recently come off a 70 point season and had a history of strong offensive performances. However, Gomez struggled to replicate his previous success in Montreal. Over three seasons with the Canadians, he scored 21 goals, 
which was far below expectations for a player earning over $7 million annually. His underwhelming performance led to the Canadians buying him out in 2013, paying him $10 million to part ways. The Nashville Predators On January 6, 2016, the Nashville Predators made a significant trade to acquire Ryan Johansson from the Columbus Blue Jackets, sending away defenseman Seth Jones. At the time, it appeared to be a win-win move for both teams. Nashville was in need of a true number one center, while the Blue Jackets needed an offensive-minded defenseman. Johansson had been coming off two consecutive 60-point seasons with Columbus, showcasing his scoring ability. Since the trade, Johansson has been a productive player for the Preds, amassing 362 points in seven and a half seasons. However, he hasn't been able to replicate the scoring prowess he exhibited during his time in Columbus. His goal production dropped, failing to surpass the 15-goal mark since his arrival in Nashville, except for the 2021-22 season where he scored 26 goals. Additionally, there has been a notable decrease in his shot output, going from an average of 210 shots in the prior two and a half seasons in Columbus to 137 shots in Nashville. Despite being acquired as a true number one center, his performance didn't justify his massive eight-year $64 million contract extension, leaving the Predators with an overpaid second-line center forced into a first-line role. On the other hand, Seth Jones developed into a dominant force for the Columbus Blue Line, making it clear that the Blue Jackets definitely won this trade. The New Jersey Devils Despite their struggles in recent years, the Devils haven't made too many terrible trades in their history. However, one trade stands out as a notable exception. The trade involved sending Pat Verbeek to the Hartford Whalers in exchange for Sylvain Turgeon. Pat Verbeek was a highly skilled forward who quickly found success from his rookie season onward. He was a steal in the draft, falling to the third round despite impressive numbers in the OHL. During his six full seasons with the Devils, Verbeek had multiple seasons with over 50 points, including a career-high 77 points in the 1987-88 season. However, he was traded for Turgeon, who had shown promise with seasons of 72, 62, and 79 points in his first three years. The Devils saw Turgeon as a rising star, but unfortunately, his career began to decline after this trade. His performance simply did not live up to expectations, and the Devils had traded away one of their best players at the time for a player whose best years were behind him. As for Verbeek, he went on to score 1,062 points in 1,424 NHL games played. The New York Islanders the New York Islanders' trade of Zdeno Chara, Bill McCault, and a first-round pick which became Jason Spezza for Alexi Yashin is a trade that haunts the franchise to this day. At the time, Yashin played a role in the Islanders' return to the Stanley Cup playoffs in the 2001-2002 season, which might have justified this trade. However, given the outstanding careers of the players the Islanders gave up, particularly with Chara and Spezza, it's a move that is difficult for fans to look back on without frustration. What makes this trade particularly painful for Islanders fans is that Spezza not only outscored Yashin, but also played a pivotal role in defeating the Islanders in the 2003 Stanley Cup playoffs when Spezza was playing with the Ottawa Senators. Ultimately, the Chara-Spezza tandem's success and contributions to deep playoff runs for their respected teams underscore the regrettable nature of this trade for the Islanders. The New York Rangers the New York Rangers trade of Mark Savard to the Calgary Flames in June of 1999 for Jan Halavich, a swap for first round picks, and a third round pick stands as a significant missed opportunity. At the time, Savard was a promising playmaking center who had shown great potential with the Rangers. However, their front office seemed unconvinced by his future, leading to this trade. Following his departure from New York, Savard went on to have a highly productive career, amassing 655 points with three other teams over 11 NHL seasons. Savard's career might have been even more remarkable had it not been cut short by concussions that forced his early retirement at age 33. On the other hand, the players acquired in exchange for Savard failed to live up to expectations. While Halovic had a decent season with 64 points for the Rangers, he struggled to maintain that consistency, while Jamie Lundmark and Oleg Saprikin did not provide significant contributions. Interestingly, the third round pick later traded back to the Flames would become Craig Anderson, who enjoyed a lengthy and successful 19-season NHL career as a goaltender. This trade ultimately represents a missed opportunity for the Rangers franchise as they were way too quick to give up a valuable asset in Mark Savard. The Ottawa Senators The Senators drafted Pavel Dimitra late in the 1993 NHL draft with the 227th pick in the 9th round. 
He played just 12 games in his first season, notching one goal and one assist. His second season, he played 16 games, scoring four goals and adding three assists. His third and final season saw him play 31 games and totaled seven goals with 10 assists. Those stats were not enough for the Senators. They ended up sending Demetra to the St. Louis Blues in return for Krister Olsen. This seemed to be a turning point for Pavel Demetra's career as he blew up for the Blues becoming an absolute star. In the 1997-98 season, he had his coming out party playing 61 games and collecting 22 goals and 52 points. That point total turned out to be his lowest for the next decade. He finished his career with 304 goals, 464 assists, and 768 points. As for Olsen, at the time of this trade, he had played 31 games for the Blues, collecting 2 goals and 9 assists. That, unfortunately, was better than what he did for the Senators, playing just 25 games, scoring 2 goals and 3 assists. After that unimpressive stint with the team, he then made his way back to Sweden to play hockey and never returned to the NHL again. The Philadelphia Flyers Watching Scott Hartnell depart from Philadelphia in the 2014 offseason was a tough pill to swallow. However, the circumstances of his trade made his leaving that much worse. One of the first deals of Ron Hextel's tenure as GM was arguably his worst, sending Hartnell to the Columbus Blue Jackets in exchange for RJ Umberger and a fourth round pick in 2015 didn't make sense at the time and still doesn't make much sense today. Umberger only played 106 games after the deal, racking up a whopping 26 points. Hartnell, on the other hand, played another four full seasons between Columbus and the Nashville Predators. His 170 points scored in his final four seasons not only served as a great send-off for a fantastic career, but made this trade look that much worse. Although the deal was made in part to dump Hartnell's massive near $5 million cap hit, the Flyers could have received much more in return. Losing a beloved player was hard enough for Flyers fans, but watching him thrive in Columbus and Nashville while Umberger struggled with Philly was just straight up hard to watch. The Pittsburgh Penguins the Pittsburgh Penguins had high hopes for Marcus Naslin when they drafted him in the first round of the 1991 NHL entry draft. However, Naslin's inconsistency and underwhelming performances in the regular season earned him the nickname Mr. September due to his strong preseason play followed by struggles when it mattered most. The 1995-96 season was a make-or-break year for Naslin in Pittsburgh and despite having the opportunity to play alongside stars like Mario Lemieux and Yermir Yager, his production continued to decline. As the playoffs approached, Naslin found himself scratched from the lineup, leading the Penguins to believe that he might have more value in a trade. Consequently, at the trade deadline, Naslin was dealt to the Vancouver Canucks in exchange for Alex Stoyanov. Initially, this trade seemed promising for the Penguins, but it quickly became evident that it was a colossal mistake. Stoyanov drafted just eight spots ahead of Naslin in the same 1991 draft, had his career derailed by injuries, playing only 45 games in the NHL. Over two injury-plagued seasons with the Penguins, Stoyanov managed just two goals and four assists before being forced to retire from pro hockey. Meanwhile, Marcus Naslin went on to have a highly successful career, scoring 395 goals and spending the next 12 seasons with the Vancouver Canucks, where he became the captain and the franchise leader in numerous offensive categories. The San Jose Sharks The San Jose Sharks made their fair share of trades over the years, but one of the worst came in 2003 when they decided to trade away their captain, Owen Nolan, to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Nolan had become a key offensive force and a leader for the team, having played 568 games for San Jose, where he tallied 183 goals and 245 assists. He was not only known for his scoring prowess, but also for his memorable all-star moments, including a hat-trick in front of his hometown fans. As a leader, he played a pivotal role in shaping young talents like Patrick Marlowe. In return for Nolan, the Sharks received centerman Alan McCauley, right-wing Brad Boys, and first-round pick used to select defenseman Mark Stewart. While McCauley had a solid season with San Jose, including a Selkie Trophy nomination for his penalty-killing abilities, injuries ultimately derailed his career. As for Brad Boys, he just played one game for the Sharks before being traded to the Boston Bruins, where he ended up finding some success. The first round pick, Mark Stewart, was also eventually traded away. Ultimately, the Sharks' return for Nolan did not match the impact and leadership he brought to the team, making this trade one of the most regrettable in San Jose history. The Seattle Kraken 
The Seattle Kraken, in their relatively short history, have experienced a range of trades, with one standing out as their worst to date. While they have had some successful transactions and others that didn't really make much of an impact, the most recent trade at the 2023 deadline qualifies as their least favorable. It's worth noting that this was their sole trade at the deadline and was a curious decision given their competitive position as they were in the top three of their division at the time. The trade that earns the distinction as the Kraken's worst trade involved sending away a fourth round pick in exchange for Jacob Magna. On the surface, it may not appear to be a significant loss, but its impact has been nearly negligible. Since joining the team, Magna has participated in just four games, averaging around 16 minutes of ice time per game. Unfortunately, he has yet to record any points, managing only three shots and five hits. In hindsight, this exchange seems like a complete waste of a fourth round pick, especially considering that other teams like the Vegas Golden Knights acquired valuable players like Aiden Hill for a similar mid-round pick during last year's offseason. The St. Louis Blues Two seasons after being the ninth overall pick, Rod Brendamore was traded to the Philadelphia Flyers. The Blues traded him and Dan Quinn for Ron Sutter and Murray Barron. Barron was a solid defenseman for seven seasons with the Blues, while Sutter had 37 goals in 163 games over three seasons with the Blues. Brendamore played nine seasons with the Flyers, scoring 601 points. He then played 10 seasons with the Hurricanes, where he won two Selkie trophies and was the captain of the 2006 Stanley Cup Championship team. Brenda Moore finished his long career with 1,184 points in nearly 1,500 games, including 452 goals. This is an obvious loss for the St. Louis Blues, and you can't help but think what would have happened if they just held on to him. The Tampa Bay Lightning the Tampa Bay Lightning's 2008 trade of Brad Richards marked the end of an era for the franchise's star-studded forward lineup that had led them to a victory in the 2004 Stanley Cup Finals. As the salary cap era began, the Lightning faced the inevitable decision of parting ways with one of their marquee players to address financial constraints, and Richards became the casualty of this transition. Richards, a third-round steal in the 1998 NHL Draft, had quickly risen to prominence, debuting in the NHL only two years after being drafted. During his first season, he notched an impressive 62 points in 82 games, setting the stage for his continued success. Over the years, Richard's stats steadily improved, mirroring Tampa Bay's offensive explosion. In his prime, Richards was the Lightning's star player with a career-high 68 assists and 91 points during the 05-06 season. Even after leaving Tampa, Richards maintained an impressive performance, recording multiple seasons with over 60 points and consistently surpassing the 50 point mark. His 11 seasons with over 50 points are a testament to his enduring impact in the NHL. While the Lightning had to part ways with Richards due to salary constraints, this trade remains statistically one of the franchise's worst deals ever. Sending Richards to the stars, the Tampa Bay Lightning received Jeff Halpern, UC Okunin, Mike Smith, and a fourth round pick in the 2009 NHL Draft. The trade essentially served as a salary cap dump and none of the players acquired by the Lightning in return stayed in Tampa for an extended period of time. Mike Smith, the most enduring of the trio, took over as the starting goalie but couldn't replicate his success with the Arizona Coyotes. Jeff Halpern provided valuable depth as a consistent bottom six forward, contributing 51 points during his time with the team. Meanwhile, UC Okanen played just 66 games for the Lightning before being traded to the Hurricanes. In the end, this trade to Dallas marked the closing chapter of Brad Richard's impressive career with the Lightning and reshaped the team's roster as they adapted to the salary cap era. The Toronto Maple Leafs On January 20, 1982, the 31-year-old Daryl Sittler was traded to the Flyers for Rich Costello plus the Hartford Whalers' second-round pick in the 1982 draft and future considerations, which ended up being Ken Strong. Daryl Sittler has the second most points ever in a Leafs uniform with 916, only Matt Sundin is ahead of him with 987. Sittler was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1989 after his retirement. Here is what the Leafs got in return. Costello only played 12 games in his NHL career. Ken Strong played 15. All in all, this is a horrifying trade for the Leafs as they lost a legendary player and a fan favorite. The Vancouver Canucks In 1986, the Vancouver Canucks traded away Cam Neely and a first-round pick in 1987 to the Boston Bruins in exchange for Barry Pedersen. 
in a trade that is widely viewed as the worst in Canucks history and one of the worst in NHL history, the Canucks gave up a lot for a very little return. Neely went on to have an extremely productive career in Boston, scoring 344 goals and 590 points in just 525 games. His physical style of play and skill made him a fan favorite and he is still considered to be a Bruins legend. The draft pick ended up being the third overall selection, which turned out to be Glenn Wesley. Wesley ended up playing 1,457 NHL games and added 537 points as a steady two-way blue liner over his long career. Barry Pedersen, considered an elite young center at the time of acquisition, was never the player he was in Boston. He had a couple of productive seasons with the Canucks, scoring 60 goals and 137 assists. However, prior surgeries had taken their toll, taking him out of the league by 1992. The Vegas Golden Knights while the Golden Knights have made many questionable trades in recent years, none have damaged their reputation more than the decision they made regarding Marc-Andre Fleury. The future Hall of Famer was loved by the fanbase and performed brilliantly during his four seasons with the team. In fact, his best season with the Golden Knights and his career came in the 2020-21 season where he won his first ever Vezina Trophy. Now, one would think after winning the Vezina that the Golden Knights would be thrilled to have him. However, as you probably come to realize, this organization does not operate like most. Instead, they chose to send him off to Chicago, with the only return being an underwhelming prospect in Michael Hakkaranen, who is no longer part of the organization. Trading Flurry backfired in major fashion as Robin Lehner battled inconsistencies and injuries in his first year as the Golden Knights' true number one, resulting in the team missing the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. The Washington Capitals Up until the 2004 trade deadline, Robert Lang was having the best season of his career and led the league in scoring with 29 goals and 45 assists. As the deadline neared, the Capitals traded Lang to the Detroit Red Wings in exchange for prospect Thomas Fleischmann, along with the respected first and fourth round picks in the 2004-2006 draft. This was the first time in league history that the leading scorer of that season had been dealt during the deadline. Although the 2004 pick turned out to be the future powerhouse defenseman Mike Green, the Capitals' decision to trade Lang did put the team out of playoff contention until the 2007-2008 season. As for the return in Fleischmann, he didn't really start showing any real success in Washington until 2007 while Lang was with the Red Wings making playoff runs. The Winnipeg Jets it was the first deal Cheval Dayoff made for an established player since the Jets relocated from Atlanta two seasons prior. Most of his deals before this involved picks, prospects, and fringe players. While sending a second rounder to the Minnesota Wild for Devin Setaguchi, who had recorded as many as 65 points in a single season, seemed like a move that would bolster the Jets' fortunes at right wing. Setaguchi came into camp in terrible shape and teammates actually had to cover for him during line drills because the then 27-year-old was physically incapable of doing them. Largely a disappointment, he recorded just 11 goals and 17 assists for 27 points and the Jets let him walk away at the end of the season. A few years later, Setaguchi opened up about his profound alcohol and drug abuse problems that had followed him since juniors. While playing for the Jets and later the Flames, he regularly abused Ambien, cocaine, and drank two bottles of Jameson Irish whiskey per day. Setaguchi entered rehab in 2015 and has been reported to be clean ever since. He later made a brief comeback with the LA Kings before wrapping up his career in Germany during the 2017-2018 season. Thanks for watching our videos. Don't forget to leave a like and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button.